Thank you for the tepid applause. Are you ready? Ready! That's the right answer, good job. I know that some of you are ready because you did this. Yes. Some of you even did this. <laughs> By a show of hands, how many of you like to work with people who at least appear like they're ready? Now hold it up, look around, see who else is part of that club. <laughs> so ready looks like something, doesn't it? And you know how uh, somebody says ready for what? They're not really ready, right? So I got to let you know, I grew up in Philadelphia. Ever heard of it? <laughs> Philly, city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. And I went to public schools all of my life until the summer between my ninth and 10th grade. And the summer of my ninth grade year, I went to, um, uh, I went to a, a basketball camp and it was called Germantown Friends Basketball and Reading Clinic. And the good news was I could read, right? So at the end of the summer, the coach approached me and he said, hey, Chris, you wanna play basketball for Germantown Friends School? And I said, yeah, how cool would that be? And I don't know if you know anything about Friends, schools, Quaker institutions, right? Quaker institutions aren't, aren't really notorious for recruiting world-class athletes. I was the second tallest guy on my basketball team. Doesn't that let you know what we were working with, right? And every now and again, we, we play other private schools, right? Other, other independent schools, but then we'd also play some of the city schools, the Philly city schools, and coach called those our character games. So I remember we, we, we had practiced and practiced and practiced and we were about to have our first city school game. And there's a huge window in front of the gymnasium and all nine of us had our noses pressed up against that glass because we could see the parking lot and we needed to see who was getting off that school bus and just how badly we were gonna get beat that day. And coach looked at us and he said, you guys better get back there and you better do your drills. You will not embarrass me today because it's not the size of the dog in the fight. How's the rest of that saying go? It's the size of the fight in the dog, yes? And since 10th grade, I recognize that ready looks like something. First thing I said, hey, hey, you ready? And I told you, some people said, yeah. Some people even did this, right? How many of you by show of hands recognize that ready never looks like this though? <laughs> so, so here's the gift, all right? I'm gonna start at three. When I get to one, I need you to look at at least everybody at your table and give them your best ready look. <laughs> and you're gonna notice some stuff about your people, all right? When I get to one, your best ready look is on. Three, two, you should probably stop looking at, at me right about now. I just want, one, give it to him. Hey gang, so ready looks like something, doesn't it? Ready looks like something. How many of you value, by show of hands, how many of you value an honest friend, right? So an honest friend, no tricks today, I promise. So you know how your honest friend says something like, um, hey, you got a little spinach in your teeth, yeah. right? That's an honest friend. And you recognize that they're looking out for you, yes? Because your eyes see that way. They do not see this way, correct? An honest friend. So you know how your honest friend says, um, tell me your name, bud. Delmo. Delmo, pleasure, Christopher. So if your honest friend, uh, Thumbo says, uh, hey, would you like a mint? <laughs> How many of you recognize you should take the mint, <laughs> right? So an honest friend, because your eyes go that way, correct? Your eyes do not go this way, yes? So this is what I, this is what I promise I will do for you. And you know how your GPS, you know, you type in the, uh, the coordinates, and your GPS will get you to that final destination. But if you take a wrong turn, and there's never really a wrong turn because the GPS will write us again, yes? And they'll just say the next 300 feet, take the left, then the right again, right? So this is what I can, this is what I can promise. I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna to get to our destination, but I promise you we're gonna to get to our destination. And I'll tell you what, you got an honest friend in me. That's the best thing I can do for you. So here's the deal. So you know how your honest friend sees you and you can't see you? Right? Whatever I see, how many of you recognize that what I see, because I'm looking at you, 
is what your residents see, your staff sees, and the residents' families see. Does that make sense to you? Do this, because it makes sense, right? And you don't see you. And if there's an opportunity for me to offer you a mint today, I'm gonna offer you the mint. And ready looks like something. And you know that it never ever look. Yeah, good luck with that. Because if I see it, everybody else that you work with sees it. So I don't, I don't know how many of you have, um, are familiar with uh, uh, good to great. And if you're not, you're not, it's not a big deal. How many of you are familiar with um, Patrick Lencioni, Five Dysfunctions of a Team? And if you're not, you're not, it, it really is okay. How many of you have read anything by uh, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits, blah, blah, right? Or The Speed of Trust, written by his boy, who fortunately has the last name Covey too. If I had Covey, I'd be writing books also, right? Okay, so we're good, yes? It does not matter what it is that you know, because some of you have been in this business for quite some time, right? Some of you have gone to fancy school. Some of you have had lots of wonderful and fantastic experiences. Nobody cares where you've been or what you've read. FYI. Nobody cares how long you've been the DON, how long you've been the, nobody cares about your longevity. You know that your colleagues care about what you do. It's not what you know. And ready is absolutely critical, and I promise, so every now and again I might mention a book that I think is worth something, and it's just my opinion, but I'll tell you what, the most important tool that you and I have as a leader, as a role model, as a coach, as a supervisor, as a boss, as a superior, like whatever you call yourself, the most important tool that you have is this right here. If I can manage this, I'm getting good stuff. And that's my thought about it. And guess what, we're gonna practice that today. And ready looks like something, doesn't it? And now you know what Monday mornings should look like, yes? Because ready looks like something, and you like to work with people who at least appear like they're ready, right? Managers, leaders, bosses, role models, blah, blah, right? So I'm really glad to be back, uh, back to Pioneer. This is my second year here at Pioneer, and usually I hang out like in other conference circles, and every now and again I have a chance to visit um, uh, individual communities. And I thought about you all, I thought about you all. And conferences in the summer are, are kind of interesting to me, and I get kind of nostalgic in the summertime. How many of you, when you, were, uh, when you were small, how many of you caught lightning bugs and put them in a jar by show of hands? Okay. How many of you put holes in the jar because you were humane? <laughs> how many of you put grass in the jar <laughs> with the lid with the holes in it? Now, I grew up in Philly. Uh, did you do anything with the lightning bug butts? So this is what we did in Philly. We took the lightning bug butts off. And if there was a young lady that we were especially smitten with, we'd make her earrings. <laughs> but if we were really trying to get somewhere, we'd make a necklace. <laughs> and now you know why there are not as many lightning bugs as there used to be. Right? So that's what we did in the summertime in Philly. Um, how many of you remember Mother May I by a show of hands? How many of you remember red light, green light? Freeze tag? Oh my gosh, in Philadelphia, let me tell you something about growing up in Philly, and this is just my experience, and it's not right or wrong. In Philly, this is what we did. We had this game called Hot Bread and Butter, Come and Get Your Supper, it was called. Or it was also called Hot Bread and Butter Beans. I don't know who came up with this. I just knew that when I moved to the neighborhood, things were already going on. And you know how new people show up in your community and there's already stuff going on in the community. And you know how new people will just watch to see how everybody plays together, right? Because that's what culture is, isn't it? Right, the rules and the games that we play at work. So hot bread and butter, let me tell you something about hot bread and butter. So it's kind of like, uh, like hide and seek in a way. However, if you were it, you hid a belt or this really long switch that you found off of a, a, a bush and you go hide it somewhere, and everybody else had their eyes closed. And then the person said, okay, ready! And then we start looking for this thing. You're getting warmer. Now you're cold, right? You're getting warmer. You're getting more, oh, you're burning up. You're burning up! And at the point at which we heard that we were burning up, 
that's when most of the other kids would start backing away towards the base. Because the minute that you find that belt, you have full, you have full obligation to chase everybody back to that base, like getting as many people as you can before they get there safely. That's right, welcome to Philly. That's right, that's, that's the kind of games we play. That's what we did in Philadelphia, because that was the culture that, that's around the neighborhood. And I don't know who makes up the culture, I just know that it's really hard for people not to fall into the culture once they get to that place. And that's what we, that's what we did in Philadelphia. Do you remember, do you remember this? Oh, I wish I had an Oscar Mayer wiener. We love to be. Cause if I had an Oscar Mayer wiener, Let me tell you something about generations in the workplace. There's some of you that are going, what the hell? <laughs> right? what? Where do they know that song? It's not about a hot dog. <laughs> just, just back in the day, I mean, the summer, it just makes, me, just makes me nostalgic. It makes me think about the way that things used to be. And I don't know about good or bad. I just know that things are different. That's it. That's it. Things are different. Do you remember this? Do you remember this game? Come here, bud. Heather, thank you for volunteering. Sure. <laughs> Where are you from, Heather? Uh, Canada, Ontario. Canada. Oh my gosh. So do this. Oh, I remember this game. Huh. <laughs> That's the international. Oh crap. Did you hear that? Oh crap. <laughs> so this is what we did during the summer too, right? Don't hurt. Oh, no worries. I got, I got you, Heather. Okay. So you can, right? Yeah. Oh, right? <laughs> yeah. And you know how some people were really good at it and some people weren't? Right? And you could fake them out like that, right? I mean, yeah. oh my gosh. And you never knew. You never knew. You never knew. I suck at this. <laughs> but here's the deal. Um, Heather, did you all play dodgeball? Yes. In Canada? Yeah. Because this is what happened. Who wins at dodgeball? Who wins at dodgeball? Come on, gang. You've been there. You've been traumatized. So tell me something about that last person, though. So usually it's going to be stronger. Usually it's going to be better hand-eye -hand coordination, right? And you know how there are games that at least we played, Heather, that people got put out, right? And if you were like the last one picked when you were growing up, right? Or, okay, no, do me a favor, go get your brother, right? Or, right, or whatever the scoop is. Or you weren't real coordinated and you would never win. This is what I learned about growing up. There were, more, there were better results when the games were inclusive and made sure that nobody was out, right? Yeah. And it didn't matter how quick you were, what school you went to, how many years of service you have in your community, blah, blah, everybody was in. And everybody knew that they were part of this bigger game, right? Thank you, Heather, appreciate you. And I think about, uh, and I think about our communities and I wonder who's in and who's out at our places. Who's in and who's out? So we played all kinds of stuff. Do you remember when, uh, when television went off? And see, at least in Philadelphia, there were one of two noises when the television went off. What were they for you? Yep. And what was the other noise? Boop. Right after the Star Spangled Banner. We've, we've reached the conclusion of our broadcast day. And then, and it was done. And it was over. And this is, what, this is what's true about Philadelphia. There are enough books, and this is also true about your town. There are enough books that read that there are no more weird people now than there used to be when we were growing up, just so you know. But what is different now? We hear about it. It's a 24-hour news cycle, yes? My mother said, I'll tell you what, if, um, if somebody wants to take you, as long as they can feed you, they can have you. <laughs> And we went out until it, when it went first light and then didn't come back until it was dark. I mean, that's, that's just, and I don't know about good or bad, I just know that things are different. And I learned some really, really important lessons about health care when I was younger. And I've only been doing this nine years, that's it. And that's not as long as some of you, but it's kind of interesting to show up to cultures that you're not used to and just kind of check things out. You know how your house smells like something, but you will never know what your house smells like because you live in it? Right? How many of you have ever been to somebody's house and you were like, wait a minute, who's cooking vitamins? 
<laughs> right? So you go to your, their, their house and you have an idea of what's going on, but you never know what's going on in your house. And it's fascinating to me coming from outside of healthcare and just showing up and just checking people out. It's an interesting place to be. And what I propose to you is that as leaders, managers, supervisors, bosses, role models, try your level best when you go back to see your place with new eyes. How many of you recognize that if you saw more around, right around your community, if you were better listeners and you were better kind of sensor feelers, how many of you recognize that you would be better at your job? Doesn't that make sense? So while we're here to get together, I need you to make sure that you watch everything that happens, listen really carefully and see what it is that you feel and also try to get a gauge for what your colleagues feel. Because whatever is happening is gonna happen in real time and it's gonna happen to everybody. And what's true in here is true on second floor nursing. Watch really, really carefully, try to take it all in because it is true, it is true, okay? So how many of you went to camp? Because I think, about, I think about summertime. How many of you been to camp? So do me a favor. Um, I'm going to come to you, and you just tell me a word that, uh, that's affiliated with camp. So when I say camp, you just tell me whatever pops into your head, OK? And there are no wrong answers. So if I say camp, camp, you say what? Campfire, yep. What else you got? If I say camp, you say what? Drowning. Drowning. <laughs> Michelle, I hope, oh, I was going to say, I hope you weren't the lifeguard. <laughs> oh my goodness. So trauma, <laughs> apparently. I'm glad you're here. If I say camp, you say what? Marshmallows, right, and s'mores. If I say camp, you say what? Boondoggle. Boondoggle. Was that a game that you all played? Got it, the little, yeah, the little braid things. Got it, got it, thank you. If I say camp, you say what? Who? Pine saw. Pine saw. That was a labor camp, man. I don't know what kind of camp that was. But I, I, think about, um, I think about my camp experience, and the interesting thing was that if we wanted to get along, we had to play with everybody. We had to play with everybody. And that was also the same way around the neighborhood, because at least around the neighborhood, like Eric, who was the weird kid, Eric had the football and the basketball. So I guess we needed to get along. And it's fascinating to me because now, I mean, only nine years in and I get a chance to visit other communities, I sit in the lobby sometimes and just watch what happens. And it seems like sometimes we forget about what it used to be when we were growing up. How many of you, by a show of hands, have favorites that you work with? And I'm just talking about the honest people. Favorites. So you know how favorites, they'll say, um, favorites, uh, what else do you need? Right? Or I'll tell you what, I'll work a triple. <laughs> right? I mean, your favorites. Right? Let me tell you something about favorites. Hey, Michelle, I'm really glad you're here. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Um, already, it looks like you're engaged, and that's really helpful to me. Oh, hey, how's it going? Anyway, what I was saying. <laughs> By a show of hands, tell me your name. Eveline. Eveline. Which one is my favorite, Michelle or Eveline? What do you think? Michelle, that makes sense, doesn't it? How long did that take for you to determine who my favorite was? Right? Yeah, about 15 seconds, right? By a show of hands, how many of you recognize that everybody in your community knows who your favorite is by a show of hands? Because you have eyeballs in your head, right? And I'm not going to ask you, because this is being televised, how many of you are favorites? I'm not going to ask you that. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But there's a difference between feeling like a favorite and not feeling like a favorite. How many of you, by show of hands, have ever seen an ugly baby before? An ugly baby. And if it makes it any easier, it's not yours. So let's just say that, uh, that I was home with my ugly child, right? For the last three weeks, I have my ugly baby with me. And I've just been enjoying my ugly child, right? Because it's my child. And it's time now for me to go to work where all my buds are, right? And I have my ugly child with me. And first, you know, I stop in, uh, I stop in physical therapy and, hey, hey, gang, here's the, here's the child, here's Junior, right? And I take Junior to the maintenance shop. Hey, fellas, here he is, uh, hey. <laughs> right? Tell me your name. Shelly. And then I say, oh, hey, hey, um, uh, anybody seen Shelly? Because Shelly's my bud, right? Shelly's my bud. Oh, thanks, appreciate it. 
Shelly, here he is. What do you say, Shelly? Am I your honest friend? <laughs> oh! <laughs> now! You did hear what she said. She said, am I your honest friend? Because you know it takes a really unique colleague to say, dear Lord, I hope he's smart, right? <laughs> there are two honesties that go on at work. There's honesty, like an honest friend, and then there's brutal honesty. Yes, brutal honesty. Brutal honesty says, that's a really sharp shirt. What made you pick that one, though? <laughs> Crap! So br brutal honesty usually is more for the person that says it than it is actually for the person in front of you, yes? Oh my gosh, and my friend Shelly, she said, <laughs> wait, what kind, of friend, what kind of friend am I exactly? <laughs> because how many of you recognize that there's a right answer to that question when somebody shows you an ugly baby? Oh my gosh, that's, that's the most beautiful child I've ever seen in my life, yes? How many of you, what is the baby's favorite game? Peekaboo, right? So if you go, peekaboo, what's that baby gonna do? Oh, delight, right? If you go, what an ugly baby, what is that baby gonna do? Delight, right? So you say, what an adorable baby, why do you say it's an adorable baby? For the big person that's in front of you, yes? How many of you have ever received a gift from somebody who should know better? <laughs> and they're looking at you as you open this thing. And they're just, right? And you're taking this thing out. And you know that they're looking right at you. And in your head, you think, oh, I'm giving this to Thelmo. <laughs> <laughs> but you say the right thing and you say, oh my goodness. Oh, thank you. Because isn't that the right answer? Isn't that the right answer? And my guess is, and I told you just nine years, just nine years, sometimes we give the wrong answer and then expect that people are gonna show up all bright and shiny and engaged because we need to be honest with them. And I find that absolutely fascinating because you don't appreciate honesty either with your ugly child. <laughs> huh. So ugly babies are real, yes? Ugly babies are real. And let me tell you what else Monday should look like. Leaders, managers, supervisors, role models, coaches, mentors. Let me tell you what Monday should look like. Hey, how are you? Glad to see you. Huh, isn't that amazing? Hello, good morning. I don't think we've met, I'm Christopher. I'm Chris. Chris, a pleasure. Hello. <laughs> so guess what Monday should look like, even though you have a favorite, don't you? Do you know that everybody at your place is an ugly baby? <laughs> and there's a right answer, isn't it? Because everybody knows who your favorite is. So here, let me, let, me, let me drop this one for you. You do know that if you struggle with everybody being a favorite, that is your struggle. That is not their struggle. That is a choice that you make as a leader. And whether you have manager, supervisor in your title or not, it doesn't even matter. If everybody knows who your favorite is, that's your fault. And sometimes, as leaders, managers, supervisors, role models, we get exactly what we ask for. However, some of us complain about whatever shows up. Doesn't that make sense? Do this, because it makes sense, doesn't it? And I didn't even say that you didn't have to have a favorite, but you should probably know, and no one else. And I'm not exactly sure which book that's out of, but it makes sense, don't it? <laughs> So I think about camp because summer just makes me nostalgic and we needed to get along with everybody if this was gonna be a really pleasant experience for us. I wanna share something uh, with you from also back in the day. You see that? So this is from back in the day, just so you know. You know how you know this? You see that right there? I don't know how many of you have stuff in your closet and you think it's coming back. <laughs> that ain't coming back. <laughs> but let me, let, me, let, me, uh, let me turn your attention to helper teacher, Miss Jean. What do you see there? What do you see, gang? I, in a, I, dis, I disagree. Elena said that's inappropriate attire. I disagree. 
So you see the little satin purple thing with pink lips. I don't know if they had this in Canada, Heather. <laughs> but this is what was going on in Philly, I just want you to know. And I am in here somewhere. Leaders, managers, supervisors, role models, I want you to tell me where I am in this. I want you to use your powers of observation because the better you are at seeing stuff and noticing and observing, the better we will be at taking care of our people. Where do you think I am? Come on, come on, quick, quick, quick. Bottom right, second row. Red jacket. Do you get it? What do you notice? And there, and there are only two kinds of people that are here. I just want you to know. There are only two kinds of people that are here. There are only two kinds. I used to think there were a whole lot of different types of people when I first showed up to work in healthcare. I used to think there were all different kinds of people. And, you know, after a while, you know, probably about six or seven years ago, I did my leading age in Pennsylvania, and that's when the roller coaster began. And I find myself at Pioneer and been to your state already and just, right, and just visiting conferences. And it's kind of interesting to me because this was not the plan. I got hired to be the staff developer, not even on the medical mandatories, but our core values like communication and listening and caring and compassion and leadership orientation and team orientation, like all the stuff, all the stuff that's on our website, right? And then here I am, like traveling all over the country. This is the oddest thing in the world to me, and it wasn't planned. And I find that fascinating. I used to think that there were, there, there were more than, uh, there were a lot of different types of people in the world, but now, I recognize in healthcare there are only two types. That's what I know about traveling and visiting places. There are only two types. What do you think they are? Caring and uncaring. That makes sense to me, Michelle. That makes sense to me. How many of you can think of one person that you work with that shows up regularly, day after day, but you get a sense that they quit a long time ago by a show of hands? <laughs> now hold it up and look around. See who else is part of that club, okay? Now, caring and uncaring, I got it. My, uh, my grandmother, um, three years ago, before she passed, she was in a, uh, we have a, 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 a group of organizations, Sunrise, on the East Coast, Sunrise. She was in a Sunrise, um, Sunrise community, and I would visit my grandmother, and my grandmother was lucid until the end, just so you know. And I'd say, hey, mom, mom, how's everybody treating you here? And my grandmother, who was clear as day, she said, everybody is just so sweet. I did tell you I was from Philly, right? Yeah. <laughs> My grandmother never ever lied to me, which then meant to me was that those folks, there were some that showed up for the paycheck, mm -hmm. and there were some that were there to take care of my grandmother, and my grandmother couldn't tell the difference. And guess which grandson was okay with that? Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So caring and uncaring, I get it, but guess what? This is the most important tool I have, yes? Don't people need to know that I'm caring and there is nowhere else I'd rather be, Michelle, than right here with this dysfunctional team I have? Right? Isn't that the goal? I used to think that there were, there were more than two types of people. So caring and uncaring, got it. That's not it, though. That's not what I'm thinking. What do you think? There are two kinds of people that work at your place, and you're one of them, just so you know. What do you think they are? Leaders and followers. I'll be right there. Leaders and followers. I got it, that makes sense to me. How many of you are leaders in your organization by a show of hands? How many of you recognize that as leaders, sometimes you just need to shut up and follow by a show of hands? And I can say that because I'm from Philly. <laughs> All right, I, I got an edge to me. How many of you recognize that there are a whole lot of people who would consider themselves followers? Sometimes you just want them to step up as a leader because they're role models to everybody else around them. Does that make sense? That's what I've learned about healthcare too. So, so leaders and followers, I get it. It's just not what I'm thinking though. I get it. It makes perfect sense to me. How many of you, I'm listening. Unga engaged and unengaged. Which one are you? Engaged. And um, tell me your name. Hey, Krista, how are you today? That's the right, you don't want to know how I am, Krista? <laughs> engaged. Um, <laughs> So Krista, are there days, are there days as an engaged individual, and I don't doubt it, I, I, honestly, I don't doubt it, um, are there days where engaged Krista shows up not as engaged as other days? Does that make sense, right? How many, how many of you are human beings in here? 
Right, so that makes sense to me, right? That makes sense to me. I got it, I got it. How many of you can think of at least one person who complained so much that if you took them, if you decided to treat them to McDonald's, McDonald's would refuse to serve them a happy meal? <laughs> so I get it, it makes sense to me, it's just not what I'm thinking. How many of you have ever looked at somebody that you worked with and you did something like this? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> right, you've thought about this before. How many of you, by show of hands, have ever dipped a french fry in a milkshake? Hold it up and look around. Check to see who else is part of that club. Okay, all right. How many of you, um, how many of you have ever had liquid come out of your nose that initially went into your mouth, by show of hands? <laughs> Keep it up and look around. Because you got some plain folk and some fancy folk. Did you notice that? Doesn't matter who it is, does it? Right? How many of you like dogs? Look around, check to see who else is part of the club. How many of you like cats? How many of you are leopard, leopard gecko, iguana, skink kind of people? Hold, be proud. What are you doing? <laughs> I used to think that there were all different kinds of people. I used to think there were all different kinds of people. How many of you, um, how many of you have ever had a near-death experience besides Michelle? By show of hands, a near-death experience. Hold it up, look around. Okay, how many, of you, um, how many of you work with at least one person that some days you look at them and wonder why they chose to work with other human beings by show of hands? And I'll tell you what, if they're sitting at the table, keep it right here, okay? I'm trying to help you out, all right? So do I work in healthcare? Do I work in healthcare? I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. How many of you by show of hands have issues? Now this is a critical one, hold it up, be proud. I want you to look around, check to see if someone doesn't have their hand up and you just smile at them. That's all you need to do. All you need to do. I used to think that there were all different kinds of people. It's amazing to me that um, I was in Toronto at the Onus Conference, as a matter of fact. And let me tell you something. Guess what? I said, how many of you have issues? And guess what they did? Mm. And executives and board members and adons and you, I don't care who it is. I said, how many of you have issues? Mm. I used to think there were a whole lot of different types of people. I don't think so anymore. How many of you, the last, uh, the last paycheck that your organization provided to, to you, how many of you used that money by show of hands? <laughs> no tricks, didn't I say no tricks today, right? Hold it up, look around. So you know there are only two kinds of people, and here it is. Those who cash the check and those who cash the check. That's all that there is at our places. Because my grandmother hopes, no matter who it is that you are, you are gonna be caring and compassionate. Does that make sense to do this? Because it makes sense, doesn't it? And I don't care if you have issues, I don't care how many french fries you dip in your milk, it doesn't matter to me, but there is a ready face, isn't it? And there is a way to be every single day I step into it, and Chris, I'll tell you what, when I'm not feeling like totally full engaged, thank goodness I have created honest friends around me, whether they are on my staff, whether they report to me or not, to say, hey, Chris, you good today? It looks like you're struggling. And guess what I say, thank you. And then I clean myself up. Because whatever you see here, so you know how if um, one person calls you a horse, why would you get upset? Because you're not a horse. But you know if three people call you a horse, I think that's you know that's what we do sometimes, we just get together like that, right? And we spread rumors. Why would you get upset because you're not a horse? You know if 10 people call you a horse, it's time to get a saddle, isn't it? <laughs> right? Everybody sees you and knows you at your place. Everybody sees you and knows you. And you and I are experiencing what everybody else is experiencing from us as leaders, managers, supervisors, role models. So the question is, what are you experiencing? Because it's a reflection of what it is that you're bringing as a role model, leader, boss, supervisor, colleague. I don't care what you are. People are responding to you and I. And I thought about, um, I thought about Summers and I thought about kind of the way back because this is the kid who is in front of you right now. And everybody has skills, everybody has talents, everybody has something different going on. Let me tell you something, what do you notice about that kid? So smile, yep, happy kid, right? What else, yeah, what's up with the jacket, right? So you see that, right? 
You know that my mother did not dress me that way. <laughs> so you know something happened between the morning and the picture and apparently I liked it. <laughs> yeah? So it's a little askew, right? What else do you notice? Yeah, I am looking away. Here's the report card. So it was called Ivy Leaf and it was first grade. Now you know how there, there needs to be a written section in addition to all the check marks and the grades, right? So that way your people, your guardians know that the teacher knows exactly who you are. Let me, let me share something. Chris gets along well with other children, rarely ever has to be spoken to. He is very mannerly. Will complete all the assignments given, a lot of initiative, has had an introduction to swimming, blah, blah, blah. Let me, sh work habits. Chris works fairly well, but also likes to talk considerably. <laughs> Surprise! Isn't that crazy? And guess what I do for a living? I talk considerably. You do know that if we were to go back to your report card in first grade, it would be the same manager that's sitting here today. And unless you've had some therapy to help you unwind, <laughs> right? And I'm not asking. People are experiencing you because you've always been you. And without the aid of a mirror, you have no idea who shows up. And guess who is the best mirror that you and I have as leaders, managers, role models? Who is the best mirror that we have? It's our staff, yes? How many of you recognize that it is absolutely foolish to get mad at the mirror? So I can show up to the mirror and say, doggone it, I wish you were bigger. I wish you were smaller. I wish you were taller. I could do that and get upset with the mirror, but that would make me insane now, wouldn't it? <laughs> and every single day we go in and guess what's reflected back? Our impact on everybody else around us, managers, leaders, supervisors. Nobody cares how much you know. Nobody cares how many years of service, but they do care how you treat them. And you know we have two kinds of customers. We have internal and external, right? Blah, blah, blah. If we don't take care of our staff, staff ain't aren't taking care of the residents, I guarantee you this. And they'll phone it in because they signed up for the job, right? And oh, I love my residents. Oh, I love my residents. I love my residents. And I hear it all over the country. I love my residents. God bless them. Even the ones that pinch, even the ones that curse, even the ones that say, mm, I'm not working with Jess. Oh, it's okay, they're a little bit confused. I'll help them out anyway. I have not been to one place yet that says, oh, I love the management team. <laughs> wow. And I get that because the residents aren't obligated really to treat me well at all. The residents aren't obligated, they just sign up, look, I'm here whether my family put me here or whether I elected to be here, I'm here. But I'll tell you what about the staff, they are desperately hoping that we will treat them as well as we treat the residents. That's what I recognize about healthcare. So I love my residents, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you have favorites, huh, good luck with that. You and I, we've been having an impact on everybody around us because that's who we are, right? Good or bad or otherwise, good or bad. And what I've also discovered, um, about long-term care is that there are two kinds of campers. There are two kinds of campers. There are two kinds of campers, too. I need a volunteer right now. You rock. Tell me your name. Come, come. Leslie, come hither. Leslie, why don't you think that your colleagues volunteered? They just didn't want to put their hands up. I guess, yeah, I guess not. <laughs> um, so you have camper one and you have camper two. All right? Leslie, how are you today? Today. Oh my. Yeah, you learn. That's, that, hey, Krista, that's called conditioning, isn't it? Right? So, my friend Leslie, thank you, thank you, Katie. So, my friend Leslie said, uh, uh, I'm fine, thank you. I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm doing fine. All right? Do, hey, do me a favor, gang. Ask me how I am. How are you? Uh, you know, I'm hanging in. <laughs> Ask me how I am. How are you? I'm hanging on. Today I'm hanging up. <laughs> Same crap, different day. <laughs> oh, another day in paradise. <laughs> same old, same old. 
another day, another dollar. I don't know, what have you heard? Well, I could complain, but you wouldn't listen anyway. Well, at least I'm on this side of the River Jordan. I don't know, it's still early yet. Come see, come saw. Fair to Midland, mostly Midland. I'm here. How many of you by show of hands have either heard any of your colleagues say any one of those things or you have said so yourself by show of hands? Okay, now ask me about engagement. Ask me about inspiring my team so that I get great surveys and all the rest of it. Because it's really hard to get anybody fired up when they ask me how I am. Oh, you know, same old day, you know, same day, different crap. It's really hard to get anybody inspired when you and I don't bring it. Make sense? Ask me how I am. Oh, I don't have to tell you, you're not my supervisor. You have two campers, you have camper one, you have camper two, all right? So let's just say that my friend Leslie, in a heartbeat, she will help you out because she's looking for opportunities to make a difference, not just professionally, but if, if she sees that you're struggling, Thelma, she said, hey, what can I do? Because that's the kind of colleague that you have, all right? Me, I'm a little bit different. Do me a favor, ask me if I'll help you out. Will you help me out? Oh, Heather, I'd love to, it's just not my resident, dear. <laughs> Ask me if I'll help you out. Can you help me out? You are killing me. <laughs> Let's see. Hey, Krista, who's your, what's your neighbor's name? Hey, Jennifer, you're going to ask me if I'll help you out, okay? I'm not going to say anything, but you'll get the message. <laughs> hey, Jennifer, did you get that? Yeah. 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 Um, and what does that look say to you? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> What's that look say to you? Are you serious? I don't think so. How many of you have either received that look or given that look at work? Huh. Leave your hands up if that look makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> hey, hey, and Kristen, you feel all engaged and stuff. So here, here it is, and I don't know what book this comes out of, but quit it. Quit it. Because it does not work. And I don't care what you know, and I don't care how long you've been knowing it, that don't work. So if you're the kind of manager, leader, supervisor, boss, colleague, I don't care what it is, you have that dull look on your face, you're gonna get exactly what you're asking for and then complain about it when it shows up. You have two colleagues, you have two campers, you have camper one, camper two. Uh, Leslie, have you ever done any acting before? In high school. Oh, perfect, all right. <laughs> The only thing I need you to do, Leslie, is uh, camper two is just getting here, all right? So I'm just rolling in. The only thing I need you to do is say, hey, good afternoon, Christopher. That's it, okay? Do you need to rehearse this? Yeah. Oh, we, I oh, think we're yeah, good, yeah, Christopher. We got the right one. All right. Okay, yell action. Action! <laughs> good afternoon, Christopher. How you doing? <laughs> I'm following you. Hmm. By a show of hands, how many of you are familiar with that move right there? By a show of hands. Let's see it, Pioneer Network. Hold your hands up. Yeah, because guess what? We're not getting a culture change if we're not even saying good morning to each other. How about that? Amen. Isn't that something? So we can talk about all the cast team meetings, and we can talk about the daily pleasures, and we can talk about all this stuff, right? To make it more of a home-like atmosphere, blah, blah, blah. You want a grilled cheese at 2 a.m.? I'm the one for you, right? And you, we can do all of that stuff, yes? But this is what I know for certain. If you recognize this, and this is what's going on in our places, good luck with all of the hard stuff. Because we need to master this before we get to this. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Do this, because it makes sense, doesn't it? Oh my gosh. So I don't know who you are, but I guarantee you this, it matters when you say good afternoon. 
It matters when you say, good morning, I'm glad to see you. It matters, I've heard really good things about you, keep it up. It matters when you say, I've got chocolate in the office, help yourself. <laughs> it matters. So I'm not gonna talk about staffing patterns because you know that retention, attrition, and call outs are they're feedback. There are methods of feedback. This is feedback. I'm letting you know, you know what? I'm not real pleased about what's going on here. And if you wanna change this at your place, I'm not responsible for everybody at my place, but I am responsible for me. How many of you by show of hands recognize that there's a difference between somebody that shows up to work and somebody that shows up to work by show of hands? So leaders, managers, role models, supervisors, bosses, colleagues, whoever it is that you are, and everybody's a role model, yes? Show up to work. And this is not a function of personality because I know the disc and I know Myers-Briggs and I know Al Dove, Eagle Peacock, and I know all of the temperament, I know all of the temperament models. This is, has nothing to do with your, your, uh, your personality, but more so to do with the results of what it is that you and I can expect when you and I show up to work. Oh, you don't, no, Leslie, I'm not talking with you. <laughs> So you have two campers, you have two campers, you have Leslie and you have Christopher, all right? Between the two of us, which one probably complains more around here, Leslie or Christopher? Christopher, got it. Who is it that probably experiences more teamwork around here, Leslie or Christopher? Who is it that probably gets uh, more cooperation around here, Leslie or Christopher? Doesn't that make sense? Oh, and by the way, what do you think I complain about? Yeah, everything, but especially Leslie, because she's ruining it around here for everyone. What kind of drug are you on? And this is what I know about some of you. Some of you show up to work on a Monday, and you can't help but be all bright and shiny. And people, you know, you say, hey, good morning. How are you? Did you have a good weekend? I thought about you. And then that's when the haters begin. <laughs> you have haters where you come from? What? Because in Philly is thick. <laughs> and you show up with a positive attitude. Hey, how's it going? And they, mm. what's so good about it? Right? And I thought there were all different kinds of people. You say good morning to somebody, and that's, guess what they do? Morning. Hmm, fascinating. So I complain about a whole lot of stuff. Now let's do this a little bit different. So Leslie, you're right there and I'm right here. You have two campers, you have two role models, you have two managers, you have two supervisors, colleagues, you have right between the two of us. And let's just say that there's a line between the two of us, okay? I wonder where you stand on this line. Now does it make sense as camper two and camper one? If I am right here, if you're right here as a leader, as a role model, do you recognize that you probably have less to complain about and you get more cooperation or teamwork than if you were standing right here? Does that make sense to you? Do, we good? Yeah. Right? If I'm standing here, I probably complain a lot less, get more cooperation and teamwork than if I was standing here. Does that make sense to you? So I want you to think about this. Where do you stand on this line when you show up? And it's not a function of who you work with. It is not a function of who your manager supervisor is. It's not even a function of whether you're a favorite or not. Do you know that leadership is a choice? Being a role model is a choice. And I have some people who show up but don't show up. And I wonder what that has to do with me because I plan to show up. And the days that I don't show up, I have really honest colleagues that say, hey Chris, how you feeling? And then guess where I have? I have a chance to choose to move up to this line. So where do you stand on this line, leaders, role models? Because it's not a function of personality. And guess what, I'm from Philly. I mean, things in Philly, at least the way that I grew up, things in Philly, Thelma are like, hey, what's going on? but it has nothing to do with how loud you are. How many of you recognize that you have passionate colleagues and you may be like this, you're passionate about your job, but you're not all loud and stuff by show of hands. You recognize that, yes? 
So it has nothing to do with volume either. People recognize passion. Surveyors recognize passion, don't they? Families and residents, they recognize passion. And guess what? Your colleagues know if you're in it or not. So what is it that you and I are bringing? Leslie, I got something for you, sunshine. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> These are peanut shoes. They are made in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yes, they are. Goldberg's peanut shoes. Enjoy. And I know how to play hot peas, beans and butter. Oh, you rock. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Leslie. <laughs> So at camp, at camp, camp was a unique experience because we needed, to, we needed to get the right culture going on at camp. And you know how there was a camp pledge? At least for us, there was a camp pledge. Stand up where you are, you're taking the pledge. Put your right hand in the air. Put your left hand on your belly. All right? Now, I don't need to see you I want your colleagues to see you as you repeat this pledge, okay? And how many of you believe that you're really uh, good judges of BS? So you know when somebody shows up and you're like, really, you, you were delivering a baby in a cab, really? Really, is that why you were late? Is that really what happened, right? So my sense is you've had enough experiences in life to say, hmm, to be a little skeptical, yes? I want people to get a sense for what you're about to pledge, okay? You don't even know what it is that I'm gonna have you read, but I guarantee you that for 99.9627 of you, you will agree with what's gonna come out of your mouth, okay? Now your job is to show up to the pledge, all right? Show up to the pledge, even though you have no idea what you're about to say. Because doesn't everybody need to be a favorite, yes? And as a role model, don't you need to show up and have everybody believe that there's not one place on earth that you'd rather be than right there where you are with the rest of us, right? Taking care of the fire, taking care of the home front, right? Making the grilled cheese at 2 a.m., okay? So as you repeat this, I want you to scour the room and look for BSers. <laughs> and you do know that as you're looking around, people are looking at you, correct? Yes. All right. And I guarantee you, this is a transferable skill. And you will find this useful, all right? All right, are you ready? Oh, I know that some of you are ready. I'm sorry, I meant you all. Are you ready? Yes. All right, campers, here it is. Here's the pledge, bring it, all right, bring it. I have come to a frightening conclusion. I have come to a frightening conclusion. I am the decisive element in the workplace. It is my personal approach that creates the climate. It is my daily mood that makes the weather. All right, hold on now, hold on. Some of you are looking at me. We're gonna be wrapping this up in about 10 minutes. You don't have to impress me. You have to impress the people at your table and everybody else, just so you know. So don't you look at me, all right? now. If you're at a seven, if you're at a seven, I need you to dial it up to a nine because that's where leadership lives. That's where, the, that's where growth is. And I, oh my goodness, I can't even tell you how much I hope you are uncomfortable at this moment. <laughs> because you know how you and I grow when we're in uncomfortable situations, right? Because you wouldn't be who you are, where you are as a leader, as a role model, unless you went through some crap in order to get to where you are. Does that make sense, right? So do me a favor, if you're at a seven, dial it up to a nine. If, you're, if you showed up at a 10 and people are looking at you like, what kind of drug are you on? You are my kind of person. Good job, all right? So dial it up, I don't care who you are, feel the burn, right? All right. As a leader, As a leader. I, possess a tremendous power I possess a tremendous power to make a colleague's life miserable or joyous. I can, be a tool of torture, I can be a tool of torture or an instrument of inspiration. An instrument of inspiration. It, is it is my response that decides whether, decide whether a, crisis a crisis will be escalated or de-escalated and a colleague humanized or dehumanized. De if we treat people as they are, we make them worse. We make them worse. 
if we treat people as they ought to be, we help them become what they are capable of becoming. We help them become what they are capable of I believe. I believe. I believe in an ugly baby. Now, huh? Gets the juices flowing, doesn't it? Now, here's the deal. If you disagree with what came out of your mouth, I will invite you to sit down right now. If you disagree with what you said and what you heard your colleagues say, just have a seat. There are no wrong answers. There's just your answer. That's it. If you disagree, have a seat. Now, here's where the rubber meets the road, right? So some stuff came out of your mouth, correct? So I'm going to come to you and you just tell me what you heard yourself say or what you, thought, what you heard your colleagues say. Thank you. And, yeah, and we'll start right there, okay? So uh, what did you hear yourself say that has you standing still? That I can change the mood of the workplace by my attitude. Got it. Tell me your name. Chris. Chris. So Chris said I can change the, uh, the mood in my workplace by my attitude. Is that why you're standing? Right? And last I checked, I don't know how many personalities you have, Chris. My guess is still, however, you are one human being. Does that make sense to you? And I don't know who your team is, and I don't know who your supervisor is, and I don't know who your, D, who your ED is. I have no clue. I just know that you're there and you can make a difference. People you say, oh, I didn't know you did motivational speaking. I don't. I just tell you this is what shows up at the place and this is the only thing that works. I don't know about motivation. I know that this is all I have. So I know some stuff and I've read some stuff and I've been to school and all the rest of it. Who cares? Doesn't it matter how you treat your colleague and then they look at you like, thank you, you are my favorite. And you know how your favorites do more things for you than people who aren't your favorite? Hey, role models, leaders, bosses, do me a favor, create an organization of favorites. And that is not a dream, that is hard work. So at the end of 364 days from now, and it's time to, uh, to give some performance reviews out, right? And we've gone a year. I dare you to have your colleagues come up to you and say, oh my goodness gracious, you're the best manager I've ever had. And you'll see exactly where you fit on that line because there are fewer call outs and less agency staff and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Better surveys, you know why that is? Because people are showing up all bright and shiny and they're paying attention to their job because I'm proud of what I do and I love the people that I work with. Huh. I don't know what you read. I don't know what other conferences you go to. So we can talk about variances, we can talk about falls, we can talk all, all about the rest of it, but how are you going to get to quality without having quality relationships with you at the center? Don't get it. And it comes with practice, doesn't it? Because the first ugly baby you see, you're going to struggle. <laughs> the first one you see, but after a while, it's going to be like using your left hand. When I showed up to Germantown Friends School, I was right hand all day long. And then coach looked at me and said, dude, you have got to use your left hand in game time situations. So guess who had to practice left hand over and over and over again? And guess what you and I need to do, managers, supervisors, bosses? You and I need to do the things and practice the stuff that is not comfortable for us so that you get a whole lot of cooperation and teamwork and watch the complaints go down because that's how it works. And that's what all the books say, says Daniel Goleman. I mean, I don't care who you read, Jack Canfield. I don't care who you read. There is no book that says, because I said so, that's why. <laughs> that will never be published, because it will never work. So at camp, there was an orientation, and then we got to wrap this thing up. There was an orientation. And at the orientation, Chris, we got to meet a whole lot of different types of campers and recognize that whoever it is that you are, you have talents, you have gifts, and you are fine, just so you know. Oh, and by the way, you also have issues. But aren't you glad that all the other campers have issues too? Aren't you glad for that? Now listen, listen carefully, campers, it's time for orientation, all right? You're gonna have a chance to meet all the other people that are here with you. And when I say, see the world, all right, when you hear me say, see the world, you're gonna leave your table and walk around, and I need you to check out all the other campers that are here. And you're going to have some judgment about the people that you see because we're judgmental individuals. Yes, do this quickly, right? Because we're judgmental individuals, right? But you're going to withhold your judgment. And this is what I'd like you to do. 
You show up to anybody, well, I, you know, as we say, see the world, and you're going to mill around and check out all the campers. I don't care who you run into. You're going to say, hello, I'm glad you're here. Got it? And it doesn't have to be that exactly. Or you can do, hey, what a nice smile you got. I don't know what it's going to be. Or you're going to look at them and just do this. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you're going to do. Just make sure that every human being that you come into contact with sees that you are bright and shiny. And didn't I say this has nothing to do with volume? Didn't I say this has nothing to do with personality? It's about practicing the left hand. That's all it is. Managers, supervisors, bosses, role models. And you're going to notice something about your colleagues. You're going to notice something about the other healthcare professionals, what they're uncomfortable with. And my thought is, whatever you see from them, that's what their people see. So as we're moving around this room, I want you to recognize that you are being judged the same way as your colleagues, the residents, and the staff are judging you as well because it's real, all right? So when I say see the world, you're gonna move around. When I do that, don't you go anywhere yet. When I do that, that's the signal, all right? That's the signal. When you hear the bell, you'll partner up with the person that's closest to you. You got me? See the world, you'll move around, ring the bell, partner up with the person closest to you, and I'll have further instruction for you at that time. All right, are you ready? That's the right answer. Hey, do me a favor, see the world, quickly, see the world. All right, everybody have somebody? All right, everybody have somebody? Let me tell you something about Stephanie right here. Uh, Stephanie, this is the gang. Gang, this is Stephanie. So, um, Stephanie, I know that she's smart as a whip. I know this. And it's also interesting because I had some judgments, like people who sit in the front of the room, I like them. Right? I mean, they're awesome. I like you all because you know you're my favorite, right? Even though yeah. you're in the back, because you're my favorite. I just need to let you know you're my favorite. Front of the room, sometimes it means a little something different. This is what I also know about Stephanie. Stephanie is smart. You know how I know this? Because I rang the bell, and she did this. <gasps> she, said, she said, that's the signal. And Stephanie did this. She did this. Oh, crap. By show of hands, how many of you are normal? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, close. I live around the corner from normal. So you figure probably about a third of you are normal, right? That's the guess. So I don't know which, uh, which camp Stephanie falls into or normal or not, but here's a test, all right? Here's a test. Stephanie doesn't have a partner. Who wants Stephanie? Now, no, no, not all of us. See, that's, I said it was a test, didn't I? I know that those of you who put your hands up, because you, you get this. You get this. And some of you were born kind of that way. Hey, I don't know you. How's it going? Oh, my God. Some of you are like that, and I didn't say good or bad. I did not say good or bad. I just said some of you have just a natural tendency to be caregivers, because this is also what I know about healthcare. Whenever you do the, um, the personality temperaments, it's going to be the one that cares and loves and nurtures. That's usually the kind of people that show up in this industry. Does that make sense to you? Right? And then there's the rest of us that need to practice the left hand. And I said, who wants Stephanie? And Stephanie was looking around and she saw some hands and she was feeling all warm and fuzzy inside. And then she looked over and she saw some of the hands weren't up and she was like, oh crap, I don't want you either. <laughs> Do you see how it works in here? Whatever is true in the conference room is also true in our communities and facilities. You walk around your, co your community not having relationship with somebody for 10 seconds. That's all we need. 10 seconds. That's all it is. And you're going to get exactly what you're looking for. Because whatever I receive, I'm going to give it right back to the residents and their families. Oh, yeah, and my colleagues who need it more than the residents, actually. All right? So we're going to try this again, okay? I'm gonna, I'll grade you on the curve. <laughs> hey, Stephanie doesn't have a partner. Who wants Stephanie? Yeah, that's better. Good job. Good job. All right. 
So you have your partner, yes, face your partner, quickly, quickly, face your partner, quick, quick, quick. All right, now, listen carefully. Hey gang, I'm gonna start at three, and when I get to one, let's think about this, right? Because I don't know about good or bad, I just know that sometimes things are different now than they were back in the day, right? And could you imagine this, that uh, face your partner, face your partner, could you imagine that the person in front of you, you have not seen them since kindergarten, and listen carefully, listen up, and they were your best friend ever. All right, now listen. Listen, it's been a number of years, you lost track of that person, right? You lost track of that person. I mean, you heard, you heard they were on drugs or something, but it, it looks like it all worked out, right? Listen carefully, I'm gonna start at three. When I get to one, I need you to greet your kindergarten bud as if, oh my goodness gracious, this is the best reunion you could ever have. Are you clear? All right, face your partner. Three, two, one. Greet your partner, please. Fascinating. <laughs> now, how many of you recall me saying that as managers, supervisors, bosses, role models, colleagues, and all the rest of it, the more you see, the better listener you are, and, and when you exercise kind of that sensor, kind of figure outer, you'll be a better role model. Does that make sense to you? While we're doing this, I need you to notice everything, as you will recall. Notice everything that's happening. Didn't I tell you it's happening in real time, right? So I said, I need a volunteer. Leslie said, yup, I'm coming up. And I'm thinking in my head, no, you don't understand. You all will be volunteering shortly. <laughs> because there are only two kinds of people, right? Those who cash the check and those who cash the check. And guess who's up? <laughs> it's the cash checkers. So I'll tell you what, I used to look at, um, I used to look at uh, uh, websites to see if I can get an idea of culture. Oh my gosh, websites are the biggest piece of BS that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> because you know, they, you got the, the marketing people that look for the colors that pop. And let me tell you something, I need you all to be wearing this today, okay? And do me a favor, all the angry and disgruntled people, give them the day off, all right? <laughs> so we're gonna be taking pictures on this day, I need, right, and all the rest of it. I wanna share something, with, come here, Kim. So, uh, Kim, do me a favor, hold your head back, very nice. All right, nice big smile. Uh-huh, now look at me. <laughs> Kim and I have been married for 50 years, and we couldn't be any happier than at Shady Arms. We love the staff. Doesn't this look like the website? Isn't this your website? I don't believe crap about websites anymore, because you know your website looks like their website. You know that, correct? All right, Kim, so do me a favor. You are, um, you're my aide, maybe you're my, my nurse, maybe, I don't know who you are. Oh my gosh, you're the unit clerk that's just helping out. Okay, okay stand behind my wheelchair. And my friend Kim, she's, uh, she's taking me to the lobby because my boys are gonna pick me up and take me to brunch, old man to brunch, okay? <laughs> so you're wheeling me to the lobby. Kim, I need you to look over my shoulder lovingly. You recognize that, don't you? <laughs> you know why you recognize that? Because that's your website. <laughs> that's exactly what your website looks like, Camilla. Come here, Lisa. Yeah, come here, Sharice. So, Sharice, this is what I need you to do. I need you to, uh, to take your, your, right, your left hand, yep, and you're facing us because you love your team, all right? And come on, we, we love our colleague, Sharice. So, uh, you're about to drop some jewels of wisdom on us, and our job is to let her know, oh my gosh, she's the best human being we've ever encountered, okay? Ready? You recognize this, don't you? You know where this is from? That would be your website. <laughs> How many of you recognize that if first shift meant second shift in the dark alley, it would not look like the website? <laughs> you do recognize that, don't you? Are you kidding me? I'll tell you what would really make your website interesting. If all of a sudden, Jim, if, if I saw this on somebody's website, mm. <laughs> you know, what? I'd say, I need to go there. That would be far more interesting and honest. Put that on your website. See what kind of residents show up? I guarantee you they'll be interesting. Culture, culture, what? Your website is what we aspire to, you know that? 
And I'll, I'll give you a little, I'll give you a, little um, uh, a cheat sheet because the, the, um, the handout has some really good information on it and you'll be able to use it once we leave here and it'll make perfect sense. I promise you this. I promise you it'll make some sense. But could you imagine you having your, your using your, um, your handout and this has to be experiential because that's how you do your job, correct? So nobody cares what you, so let's see. I went to a conference. This says, uh, I need to say good morning to you. Good morning. <laughs> and how are you today? <laughs> come on, come on, right? This is the tool. This is it. This is what you got to use. And we're using it to be effective or, or non-effective. And guess what? It works either way. We're going to be good at one of them, aren't we? Right? And I'm just asking you to practice your left hand. And it has nothing to do with personality. Right? And nothing to do with years of service or how much stuff you read. This is it right here, real time. Everybody's a volunteer when you get back to the place. Does that make sense? Do this, because it makes sense, doesn't it? Right? So now you know how this is going to work, all right? Um, when I say see the world, you'll mill around and check out all the other people. Do me a favor, don't you make this weird and stalky. <laughs> all right? So you say hey and you move on. When you hear the bell, that's when you know you got to partner up with the person that's closest to you. Does it matter who the person is? It doesn't matter. But when we get back to the ranch, it doesn't matter who it is that I side up to, does it? It doesn't matter who I partner up with, does it? Whether I know them or not, in dietary, and housekeeping, it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter class, it doesn't matter culture, it doesn't matter race, it does not matter. If our end goal is making sure that the residents have the best experience and better than that other place whose uh, website looks exactly like mine, then I'll tell you what the, the, the distinguishing factor is. It's going to be the human beings and the relationships and the quality that you help to establish without reading another book or having another meeting. I am sick to death of meetings. <laughs> and it's getting hectic out there, accountable care organizations. Gosh, reimbursements. Oh, Whew. it's hard. And it's getting harder until we master this. And then we're cooperating. Imagine that. And then when people make mistakes, it's going to be OK, because we have a relationship, right? And then I can give feedback. Now, can I? Try to give feedback to somebody who doesn't think much of you. Good luck. Right? Makes sense. All right, quickly, see the world. Quickly, see the world. All right, everybody has somebody, yes? All right, now. <clears throat> so, so nine years in, nine years in, I've noticed something as well. So we can talk about theory, right? We can talk about deposits and withdrawals. We can talk about filling buckets. We can talk about all these things that, that speak to emotional intelligence, right? We can talk about all that stuff that, that speaks to emotional intelligence. And it's kind of interesting because we can look at this stuff, and I can quote you know, this author and that author, but when the rubber meets the road is what you're doing right now and what you're experiencing, and there's no right answer. Right? Whatever you're experiencing, you're experiencing. And it's interesting because sometimes when I say, okay, it's time to do eyeball to eyeball, sometimes that's when some of us say, oh, I've got to go to the bathroom now. <laughs> and I find how fascinating that is. Because I may be really good at the memo. You know memo doesn't change culture? I just want you to know that. The big memos, eh, good luck with that. Memos don't change culture. It's eyeball to eyeball, isn't it? And everybody doesn't feel comfortable eyeball to eyeball, and I get it, and it's not good, it's not bad, it is what it is, and that means that I just need to practice it more. That's all that that is. So I'm really grateful that you're hanging out because you know that the people at your place are hoping that you're going to spend more time with them here and that I'm not going to pass them in the hallway without introducing myself as a role model 
And I'm not going to let them just go through their day with their head down before I say, hey, it looks like you're struggling. What can I do? Because that's leadership. I don't care what title you have. That's leadership. If I'm trying to, trying to solidify a culture, if I'm trying to, to, to add quality, it starts with relationship. Okay, so good job. I appreciate you. Face your partner. Face your partner. <laughs> All right, now listen carefully. So what's interesting to me about Pioneer Network, I recognized it last night and uh, last night and tonight. Um, last night I know that there was a reception and then it was uh, on your own, right? And then tonight I was looking at the schedule. I don't know if there's anything going on on your own. So guess what? You, uh, you said I I'm full. I've got a lot of good information, and I am just going to walk around, you know, Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm just going to let my hair down. I'm just going, woo! <laughs> woo! <laughs> now face your partner, face your partner. So you're walking around downtown Kansas City, Missouri. Face your partner, don't you look at me. <laughs> so, so, hey gang, so you run into your partner? And they had the same idea as you did, but you see your partner coming out of the dirty bookstore. I want you to go ahead and greet your partner, please. All right. You're going to say goodbye to your partner, but you're not going to shake their hand, are you? I wouldn't advise it. Say goodbye to your partner. See the world. Quickly, see the world. See the world. All right, everybody has somebody, yes? You know what? That's the right answer, isn't it? And if I showed up at your place, hey, Michelle, I showed up at your place, and I stood in the middle of the hallway, and I said, hey, does everybody have somebody? Yeah, that's the hope, isn't it? And for every one of my staff members to say, yup, I got somebody. Yup, I'm wanted here. Yup, I'm valued and appreciated. By show of hands, how many of you like to feel valued and appreciated? Look around. If I showed up at your auditorium or your, your, uh, your dining center and I said, hey, how many of you like to feel valued and appreciated? What would they do? Do you know that if I choose not to value and appreciate every single one of my human beings that I have there and I don't get everybody on every day, now do I? Because where's my friend Krista? Because sometimes, Krista, I show up and I'm not thinking about you. Does that make sense? Right? But I'll tell you what I do practice, though. I do practice until it becomes muscle memory, is I try to notice everybody in front of me, whether they're in my department or not, whether they belong in my silo or not. <laughs> right? Because I'm a colleague. And doesn't the website say that you're nice and sweet and friendly? Because if I'm not, that would make me a hypocrite. Now, wouldn't it? And I cashed the check. Now, didn't I? So you like to feel valued and appreciated. And this is also how it works. Tell me your name. Cindy. Hey, Cindy. So if I, um, if I, uh, if I uh, give Cindy a call, and it's, um, it's probably about 10 minutes before she gets in, but I'm burning up, and I couldn't wait, what do you do at your place? Director of Aging Services. And I say, um, hey, Cindy, I know you're not there. I just wanted you to know that, um, that uh, I, I really think uh, really highly of you. And I wanted you to know, and I knew you weren't going to be there, but um, I needed to tell you. And actually, we've all been talking about it. And I appreciate the, uh, the energy you bring and the caring and compassion. Um, hey, I, I don't have anything else. Just thank you. So Director of Aging Services, right? How many of you recognize that Cindy does not know any more about state regs from that conversation? She doesn't, does she? Right? How many of you recognize that she's not any better at, at um, uh, handling the department's budget from that conversation? Got it, right? How many of you recognize that there is a possibility that Cindy goes about her day a little bit different as a result of that phone call? Does it make sense? So left hand, for some of us, says, make the call. Make the call. And we're busy people, right? 
and we have meetings and we have things to figure out and we, we, we need to initiate stuff and all the rest of it. But I'll tell you what, how long did that phone call take? Yeah, if that. And my guess, Cindy, as, as busy professionals, we have at least 30 seconds to make the culture different than what it currently is. If you don't remember anything else, do me a favor, make a call. And that's not the same as having a conversation. It's not the same. And you see how fast it is to establish relationships? You see what we're doing right now? And I'm watching people who don't have their guard up. So you can run into a complete stranger and then all of a sudden you're looking at them, you just came out of the dirty bookstore, what you get? <laughs> That's a fascinating read. I got that last year. <laughs> but do you see how quickly this happens? Isn't that something? All right, face your partner, face your partner, face your partner, face your partner. Now listen carefully. I'm going to start at three. When I get to one, I need you to greet your partner knowing that they are going through something somewhere in your life, their life. And here, let, let's stop out for a moment. By show of hands, and you're, you won't have to share any of this, just so you know. I mean, this is not like huggy-touchy time, okay? How many of you right now are experiencing a battle, a struggle, or a challenge somewhere in your life? And it could be small, medium, or large. It could be related to finances. It could be physical. It could be mental. It could be spiritual. I don't know what it is. Your check engine light. It, I don't know what it is, all right? <laughs> By a show of hands, how many of you right now are going through something somewhere in your life? Now, I need you to look around the room. Check out the club. Check out the club. Got it? So you do know that um, what informs my relationships with the people that I work with, and it's not even in my job description, is, Stephanie, if I know that you're already going through something before you get to me, I could give you some more stuff, but that would make me, that would make me insane. Because if you're already going through stuff, as a manager, as a leader, as a role model, why would I bring you more and then expect you to be all bright and shiny? That doesn't make any sense to me. And it's not even in my job description. And that pledge, when I came across that pledge, I was like, oh, crap. This is what I do. And this isn't even what was showed to me in human resources when they hired me. But that is the job. And that's how you get cooperation and teamwork. Oh yeah, and sometimes more loot, FYI. So I'm gonna start at three. When I get to one, I need you to greet your partner knowing that they are going through a battle, struggle, challenge somewhere in their life. You got me? Okay, face your partner. Three, two, one, greet your partner. Now, we're going to get to some questions, just an FYI, and also some observations, okay? Also some observations. Um, how many of you, how many of you recognize what culture change possibly could be by the mood in the room currently? Does that make sense to you? And this was what, 90 minutes? This was 90 minutes. Oh, did you notice that there was no committee with me? Did you notice that? I didn't do any emails. Did you notice that? Huh. I didn't go into the kitchen and say, straighten up. Did you notice that? I, did you? I just think it's fascinating. How many of you recognize that, um, that if you're looking for world-class customer service, this is probably what it sounds like also? Isn't that something? How many of you recognize that this is what engagement sounds like also? It comes from the same place. I don't care what you call it. I don't care what you call it. It comes from the exact same place. And I'm watching a, a group full of uh, strangers. They're hugging each other. <laughs> well, go, go figure, right? And some of you, just by personality, you were looking, when are we going to get to hugging people? <laughs> That's how I choose the sessions that I attend. <laughs> Will there be hugging? Not going to that one. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, people are looking at each other and not remembering that there are battle struggles and challenges that are somewhere else in your home city, in your home home. Isn't that something? So some, pe some people say this is, the, uh, this is the bad news. 
Well, I'll, I'll give it to you. Do you want the good, or new, the good news or the gooder news? Your choice. Good news or the gooder news? So the, good, the goodest news of all is that apparently, apparently you have the skill and ability. Apparently you do. And you know how some of us decide not to turn it on? Or some of us turn it on with the people that we care about, because Stephanie's my bud, right? You, however. <laughs> do you see what we do at work? And this is exactly how it is at work, exactly. Although you and I, we have the ability, don't we, to turn it on when we want. And it has nothing to do with my supervisor. And it has nothing to do with the team that I work on. And it has nothing to do with the executive team or the senior staff team. It has nothing to do with them. And my guess is you're going to get exactly what you asked for. And whatever it is that you practice manager, whatever you practice leader, whatever you practice ED, whatever you practice charge nurse, whatever you practice dietary aid, whatever you practice CNA, is going to show up. Because that's how it works, apparently. If we don't institutionalize some of this stuff, it's just a bunch of feel good. So the question is, how do you institutionalize it? Now, we don't have much time left. And do you know that there's a national audience? Oh my gosh. There's a national audience. International. International. I love Canada. I got you. It's here for Canada. So while we're here, I'll tell you what, what questions, what observations, what comments, what feedback, because it's all important, OK? And Kevin, would you be willing to, uh, to help facilitate the mic? Awesome. Got it? So Michelle, oh my gosh, you almost drowned. I don't know if you knew that. I'm fine. Good. Um, I was just thinking for me, I'm pretty good in my job when I go to work. I'm pretty all right. I'm a pretty faithful girl, mm -hmm. so I don't have too much problems being caring and loving towards people in general. Oh, Michelle, give but me the I dirt. But I do yeah. struggle uh -huh. with, I, no, I don't, yeah, I struggle with, with it on a daily basis, you know, just keeping that momentum going, but I think what's really important is consistency for me. You need consistency, consistency to keep. in anything. Uh -huh. Consistency is very important. I see that in what we do. Yes. And for me, doing what I do consistently. I wish that from my coworkers as well. I appreciate that, Michelle. And one of the things that, um, that I experience, and, and I'm thinking about the personality temperaments, they're, they're, it's all based on four, four different types of people. And the organized one, um, the one who likes poodles and mini skirts, right? I mean, right, our opposite sides of the spectrum and spontaneity. You have the one that is the, hey, let's hug it out, right? There's nothing that we can't solve with a hug, right? And then you have one individual that says, I'll tell you what, you keep your hugs to yourself. You bring me data, right? And you have these different types of people. If you're not one that strives for consistency, that may be your left hand. And Michelle, I would encourage you as somebody who depends on consistency to practice the left hand may be spontaneity, right? Because we have to be balanced, you have to be balanced. And sometimes um, there's a difference between the golden rule and the platinum rule. So the golden rule, tell me your name. Amanda. Amanda, Amanda and I, we've been seeing each other for, uh, it's been nine solid months now. And Amanda has been, um, uh, Amanda has been dropping hints that um, she, uh, she wants a spa treatment. And she's been dropping, and she hasn't even been subtle. <laughs> right? And you are, gonna get a, you are gonna get me a spa treatment. However, there's nothing that would bring me more pleasure than to get her a nice brand new pair of kicks, the latest KDs, KD elites. And I get her a nice leather basketball as well. <laughs> League regulation style. And I show up and I say, Amanda, I love you through and through. Happy anniversary. <laughs> you see, the golden rule is different than the platinum rule. The golden rule is treat people how I want to be treated, Michelle. Guess what? I need to treat you how you need to be treated. The staff needs to be treated the way that they need to be treated, not from my personality. Are you clear about that? Does that make sense to you? I need to know who my people are so that I can meet the need. Because that's what service feels like. And then watch who becomes your favorite. 
is fascinating and it'll come true, say the books. <laughs> what, thank you, Michelle, for getting us started. Who else, quickly? Listening, listening, Cindy. This was an amazing workshop, amazing. And what was... And what was so amazing about it is that you gave us the tools that we carry within ourselves. That's all we need. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. So I struggle with um, trying to stay positive for our 10-hour shifts that we have. Yes. And um, I'm wondering how you stay positive through and through and keep strong and keep going and still have enough to keep you positive with yourself and to give positive to your team. I appreciate it. What, tell me your name? Dina. Dina. So um, uh, staying positive. So some days it works better than others, right? Some days it works better than others. And um, what do you think part of my answer is going to be? What have I shared with you on those days that I don't, that I'm not like me, that I have, that I, that I've created relationships that can help to fill my bucket, right? To fill my bucket and say, Hey, Chris, what do you need, bud? And then I think, Oh my gosh, thank you. Because it's hell out there today. And as long as I have that kind of docking station, and sometimes that comes by my buds at work. So I, everybody's a favorite, Dina, but I only have a few buds, right? So checking in with them, that's what science says, though, too. And the other thing is, Dina, that um, I need to make sure that my life is full before I get to work. I need to make sure that I'm doing things that fill me up outside of work so that when I show up to work and people are making withdrawals, you got me? So people are making withdrawals. I say, thank goodness I have this. Sometimes I do the aren't you glad game. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad, Dina, that you're not related to Flavor Flav? Phew. So then I get, whew, yeah, I am glad, <laughs> right? Oh my goodness gracious. The other thing too is I, I think about this because some people have um, employee of the quarter and you get a parking space or employee, right? And all of these kinds of things. I think my job is, and it comes back to me as a professional, is that I just need to create employees of the moment. Because if I can let you know how much I appreciate you, guess what you do? You start, you start, and then if you're doing that, guess what I'm doing? I can't help it. So I don't know if you're going to spend a little extra time with your favorite resident who fills you up. So then when I go to Miss Johnson, I still have a little extra on reserve. And I, and I practice and I practice and I, I practice because it's not magic. None of this stuff is magic, but it is the practice. Um, so the aren't you glad game is critical for me. I have three other people in my house. I know on any given day, two of them love me. <laughs> this is national crap. <laughs> right on crap. Um, but I, I think about the things that I'm really grateful for, and that helps, oh my gosh, that helps. And I, and I like good chocolate, and I have good chocolate in my office. <laughs> so that helps. Be sure to take breaks also, even if they're 10, even if they're 10 seconds at a time, take a break, go, oh, just, mm, right? And breathe deep, because that also works. Because that exercises the stuff and then gets chemicals going, blah, 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 okay? Good question, and I'm sure you are so not the only one. What else we got? Yes, we're going to wrap. Um, uh, walk, do this. You see that? Good, thank you. I appreciate you. Do that. Excellent. Oh, some of you are struggling. I find it fascinating. <laughs> do me a favor. Close them. Breathe in. Open your eyes. Breathe out. Very nice. From where you're standing, I need you to do an about face until you're facing me again. Go. Oh, how compliant. Good job. <laughs> um, you know, so on those days, uh, Dina, when, um, when it looks like withdrawal after withdrawal is coming, some days you need to self-medicate, right? <laughs> but don't take anything from the med card. Take your right hand. Because some, um, some days you need to give yourself a hug, and it looks like this. Mm. And do me a favor, make the noise. Right? Get mmm. Mm. Yep. 
Now this time lean over to hold your colleague accountable for doing something that is bringing them some discomfort right now. You lean over and make sure that they're making the noise too. Get, but don't rub, it's not that kind of party. Mm. Very nice. Now while you're here, and Dina, thinking about it right now, um, as, you go through, uh, as you go through the halls, you create it. You create it, okay? Uh, high five two people, then face me again. High five two people. All right, um, if you'd like to, first of all, if um, uh, when you get back and you have to recount, you know, you have to tell the, 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 the team what happened at the Pioneer Conference, because I know that some of you, do, yeah, I'm going to a conference, because you have to do that. But on the inside, you're going, oh, I'm going to a conference, <laughs> right? I got it, right? When, um, when they ask you, well, what happened? You can say some, some dude from Philly talked about camp, and oh my goodness gracious, the, uh, the message, it completely opened my eyes. It turned me around. Oh my goodness, it touched me. And while he was there, he even allowed me to touch some of the people that were there too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you.